Howdy and Frank show. You're in for a treat. This is a longtime friend of the program, and normally he would be here in the studio with us, but he's a busy, busy man. He's got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm talking about Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses. Hello, Duff. Hey, Frank. How are you? Good to see you. Where are you at right now? I'm actually in Seattle, Washington, uh, in the slew of uh, 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 being in the studio every day and doing a ton of interviews for my uh, uh uh, tour in Europe and the U.S. coming up. Yeah, you got you know you got a show at the El Rey because we announced that like last Friday when the tickets went on sale. Yeah, that show that's what I up. heard. And then you also have uh, what the the live album coming out that you re- that you recorded at the El Rey Theater. The live record from the El Rey Theater came out last week. Okay, I'm yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, so um, I put out the record Lighthouse in October, my, my second sort of record, ap- my record after Tenderness. And um, uh, I wasn't going to tour. I put the record out in October. I was still on the Guns N' Roses tour at that right. time. So the kind of last thing I want to do is get off that two and a half year tour and go tour straight away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, yeah. have, I have stuff to do around the house, Frank. I mean, there's a honey-do list. It's like two miles <laughs> yeah. long. You, know? you got to finish that stuff. No, it's not going to get done by itself. So, you know, just things, ordinary things I had to take care of in my life and um, and decided to tour later on, on Lighthouse. So that comes up in, in October, November. So we thought it'd be a good idea just between the release of Lighthouse last, last October and my touring, let's put out a live show to remind people that I actually tour this stuff. So uh, Tenderness Live at the El Rey was the product of that. Awesome. I, I want to get more into that, but I want to ask you a question first before we get into to the, to the album and, and the tour. Uh, I want to ask you about beer, okay? And I don't know if you know where I'm going with this. I saw this story this morning, is that oh. uh, that you uh, think that the beer in the Simpsons, Duff's beer, was named after you. Like, you're pretty adamant about that. Well, it's not like I'm even adamant about it or pissed <laughs> or anything. So... Uh, you know, they, they, you know, the funny thing is if I say anything about it, and I have a few times over the years, they get really defensive. No, it was like, I'm going to sue them or something. And it's like, guys, chill out. But back in uh, 1988 and 89 and 90, I was known as Duff the King of Beers. McKay. Axel would announce me. I had this, this championship beer Budweiser belt that I wore on every show. And we were, we were becoming, you know, kind of popular culture at that time. Absolutely. And this, this adult cartoon had uh, gotten hold of our management office. And, you know, there was no adult cartoons back then. I thought it was a college art project, you know. They want to use your name as the beer in the cartoon. Like, I don't care. I didn't know anything about branding or any of that stuff back then. You don't know. Right. And off they went, and suddenly people were going, there's this cartoon, man, it's amazing, and it's got Duff beer in it. And uh, so that was that. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to, like, point my fingers at anybody. Or, I know, because I know, saw that, like, the creators, like, Matt Groening's like, that's ab- that's absurd that we would ever do that. And I was like, oh, Yeah, yeah, on. they go there. They go there. Like, it's absurd. And, like, you guys, I don't really care. It doesn't matter. Have you, uh, have you guys, did, did Guns N' Roses ever do like an episode of The Simpsons? There's like voiceovers, like you guys passed through Springfield. Was there ever an episode? Because maybe that could know, be a nice, cool trade off. I mean, Axel may have. Or he did something in one of the, maybe it was South Park. I forget. Uh, no, haven't. Um, haven't. And, and again, Frank, I want to say it's, if it comes up again, you saw it again this morning on the news. I did. I saw it. I was like, it's, no it's, way. It's really if you if you know me and you and you trust me and I say it's no big deal and I kind of get a chuckle out of it when they get, you know, yeah, really like that's absurd. I'm like okay, guys, you you're but, overreacting a bit here. But Duff uh, the King of Beers, I mean, that's a great nickname to have. I mean, I that, I mean, as far as and you had the Budweiser, what like a, it was like a wrestling or a heavyweight champion yeah. belt that you wore every single show. I don't know what happened. It's in many pictures. I, you know, when I have, you have stuff when, especially me, I don't know. I lost everything I had. <laughs> That's a whole nother subject. That's a but whole I nother see, subject. Like, but I see pictures of myself, like that Harley Davidson shirt I wore in Paradise City. Where'd that go? <laughs> it's just gone. My Budweiser belt. Where did it go? 
You know, yeah. Duff, I would love to stay and talk to you all day long, but I, I mm. do have to step out, but I'm going to leave you in very, very capable hands, okay? I, I'm going to introduce you to this uh, this lovely young woman who's decided to help us out here at the Heidi and Frank Show, 95.5 KLOS. You may know her. I'm not sure. Uh, it's Grace McKagan. Hi. Hello. Look at this stuff. Good morning. Hi, Hi Dave. Thanks so for having me, Frank. <laughs> Your so, new job. Yeah, it's my first interview for KLOS, so I'm happy you're my first. So I'm going to oh, step geez. out, and okay. you guys uh, do your thing. And uh, But Grace, you got this handled. She's she's yes. awesome. I'm Love on it, having Frank. her around here, Nothing to worry about. Thank you so much, Thank bud. You, Good Frank. luck with everything. Okay, right, thanks, so, Dad, with Father's Day coming up, I have to ask, who's okay. your favorite daughter, me or May? Wow, wow, <laughs> really? You're doing that? Hey, uh, well, I'm just kidding. I, you are both my favorite. Depends on both the day, are... I'm sure. No, you guys are always <laughs> both my favorite. You know, I'm a I'm a dad of daughters. That's my life. Yeah. You know, claim to fame right there. Yeah, we know. You know. Um, so back into your double live tenderness album release, which was filmed and recorded at the El Rey. Why was filming a live al album specifically so important to you, the live aspect? Okay, well, that's a good question. That that band, as you know, I really liked that band. I had Shooter Jennings band we love and Shooter having Jennings. Shooter in the it, and it it became that tour became very special. The more gigs we played, and um, I thought it would be a great idea to let's memorialize this. Let's get this on film, and because of you, you know, uh, uh, Connor, who did a bunch of your videos, mm -hmm. you introduced mm -hmm. me to all these little young filmmaker people. And so I, it was easy for me to make a call, like, can you come film the show? So things were made easy. I, I think they, they captured a a cool show, a cool vibe, a cool band that will happen once in my lifetime, mm -hmm. having that band, you know, unless it happens again, I suppose. Maybe but uh, but uh, I'm glad we got it on tape and, and put out a record of it. Uh, made a cool recording shooter mixed it mixed this album um i don't know about eight weeks ago at sunset sound i was there he when he was it. mixing it i went in oh, for a were? writing session yeah it was shooter it's such as you, we, you and i are so intertwined i know here. we're kind of now the same person but not <laughs> yeah 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 um i loved hearing uncle matt play trombone and don't look behind you live at the l ray yeah. Also, for those of you listening, my Uncle Matt is my dad's older brother, who was the director of the renowned band department at Lindero Middle School in Agora for 33 years. Yes. What was it like getting to share that onstage experience with Matt as a full-fledged adult who you grew up playing with and also been in your 20s? Yes, right. So my brother Matt, you guys, um, if you anybody knows our live like a suicide record, Guns N' Roses, uh, there's a song called Move to the City. And we wrote it with this horn section in, uh, in mind. And, and uh, Matt, my brother Matt, got two other players. And they played on that recording uh, back in 1986. And then we played with the Stone. We opened for the Stones in 1989. Amazing. And we got, we got to have that horn section come back and play with us live. And I flew my mom, or your grandma, uh, down to, to L.A. And she got to see that. See your boys up on that big stage. I love it. Yeah, and then, you know, uh, here we come to Tenderness in 2019. I had this horn part, and I called Matt again. I said, can you get the guys? So we brought in the suicide horns, as we called them back in the day. That's cool. And uh, they played on the record, and then when we played L.A., we had the suicide horns there. That's so it's, cool. it's, it's epic to be able to share music with my brother. We, we do diff two different things. He does jazz and bebop and stuff, and I do rock you know. well you guys are both clearly amazing at what you do and i know he's well, he, really happy he's excited to do it i talked yeah. to him a bit at mom's birthday about it oh good yeah so um why is the showbox venue in seattle wh where your last stop of your tour is so significant and special to you for those la listeners who maybe aren't familiar with the, the showbox right you and, and la listeners you may have seen me wearing like save the show box hats or shirts or, or other people not just me a lot of rock people were doing that um the show box is a, an old venue downtown seattle that uh, kind of reopened in 1980 and all the new wave and punk bands were playing there and so i got to see 
so many shows that changed my life there from 1980 to 1984. I mean, I saw the police and the, spe and the specials opening up for 100 people. You know, I saw the ruts. I saw 9 and 9. I saw the jam. I saw squeeze. I saw, I could just name you, keep naming bands. But uh, it really, the venue itself had a lot to do with forming my musical taste and what I found out was possible to do in music. And so whenever I come back and play the show box, it's, it's just a special kind of, this is where I'm from sort of gig. The homecoming. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one of our segments we talked about on air today with callers who dialed into the Heidi and Frank show was if they've yeah. ever stolen from a famous person. And I talked a bit about how mom got her wedding ring stolen from a jewelry cleaning place a while back. Yeah. So my question for you is, has anybody ever stolen anything from you or any of your friends? Well, I was talking to Frank earlier about, like, where's this stuff of mine mm. gone? Clothes, yeah. I see. I think some stuff got stolen from me. I remember, yes. And I it have, wasn't me and May. And, no, 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 it wasn't you and May. Um, before you and May, I had, I still have this Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger um, jacket from Terminator. And it's got the bullet holes in it, the leather oh, jacket, the famous. That's iconic. And he had about, iconic. He had about <laughs> six of them for the making of the movie. He gave me one. That's so cool. Because we did the song for Terminator and hung out with Arnold a few times. At his house, you know, right? Went, slash and I went to his house. Yeah, you guys we, like uh, went to the movie room or something, right? We got drunk with the old, uh, uh, with Arnold. And, <laughs> That's uh, so iconic. Uh, <laughs> back when we were drinking a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we went, yeah, we, to the screenings with him. And, you know, he kind of, he thought we were cool you know i you know like well, look at these guys these guys are crazy i, I like hanging out with them oh my um, God, that's but he gave me a jacket i had a party up at my house i you know i would got into a bad i was in a bad way for a couple of those years in there and just kind of like randoms would come to my house and mm. it's fine you know yeah. and that jacket that jacket went missing totally i remember one so, time in high school i threw an accidental party at the seattle house somebody texted yeah. out our address and somebody stole my computer and that was horrible. Yeah. We got, yeah. Yeah. We, we, found, we found those kids, didn't we? Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, we found them. Um, you know, I just, I went to a, a, a service on Saturday. Mike McCready and I played a song at this, our friend's service. And a, a guy came up to me. He goes, uh, I owe you an amends. I came oh, to the party at your stop. house your daughter had. <gasps> and, Shut uh, up. This is new goes, tea. You know, yeah, so it just happened, and Wait. the guy's like, you know, I'm sorry, I was there, uh, you know, and then you came in, and I saw that we were doing the wrong thing, and uh, I'm like, your amends are accepted, oh. it was your fault, Was you know? he a part of, like, initiating the party, did he say, or not really? He didn't want to No, say. he said, I just came down, I had come down the stairs, and he was holding, like, one of my records or something, Oof. and realized suddenly, and he goes, you came down, you were super pissed. I remember that yeah. day clearly. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, all the fans are dying to know what's up next for Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Um, well, we're talking about a bunch of stuff right now. That's um, There's a bunch of stuff brewing, for mm -hmm. sure. So um, when it's time for me to talk about that in more detail, I'll... Uh, I'll, you'll be the first to oh, okay. How about that. Respect. Breaking Looking forward news, to it. <laughs> breaking news on KLOS with Grace McKagan. That could be your new segment. Oh, I love it. I love breaking it. Breaking tea. Breaking tea. I don't think they know what tea means here. I got to teach them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, now to wrap things up, again, with Father's Day coming up, what's one piece of advice you can give to new fathers? Um, new fathers. Yeah. Well, you just, you got to be patient and, and if it's a daughter um you have a daughter just realize they, they these young little girls and they become you know uh, they, they look to you as what a man should be I'm, i firmly believe that and you're kind of like the one they're going to look to like well this is what a man should be like so put your chest out and act with honesty and, and clarity and sureness and and lead those those daughters uh down a good good road and if it's you know anytime you have a little kid at home kids or kids and you have a right be patient 
take care of your wife, take mm -hmm. care of those kids, and don't get, you know, no yelling, no screaming, just take care of them. That's your responsibility. You got, you know, that it's a, I think it's just awesome myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. That's great advice. And because Frank can't be here right now, I'm filling in for him. He has a little gift yes. he wanted to give you for Father's Day. It's some boxers from Shinesty. Boxers from what? Shinesty. One of our Shinesty. sponsors. Yeah. Oh, Shinesty. Shinesty. What is Shinesty. that little thing in the front? Is that like to put your... It's for your private area. It is. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay. you, Shinesty. Well, thank you for the boxers with the sp uh, space for the package. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Embarrassing. Yeah. So embarrassing. So okay. Embarrassing. Thanks, Dad, for coming in again. We love you and can't wait to have you back. I love you, baby. Bye. Okay. Bye.